the anime androgyny satanic cartoon. You wonder sometimes why your boys begin to look like that. There just might be a reason. Let's go ahead and uh, read our text today. Numbers 31. Let's begin. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then shall you drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images. Holy God, I know that you're not calling us to perform this work, but Father, we know at the same time that we do have power and the command to not allow these wicked pictures in our houses to defile our children, Lord. This is obvious. In many ways, there's no need for me to preach this sermon today. It should be obvious to every Christian in America. But Father, we become dull of hearing. And I do pray you'll help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Please be seated. I want you to notice that God commanded that you destroy their pictures. What was wrong with their pictures? Their, their pictures were full of idolatry, evil. Now, modern Americans say, well, all right, pictures are bad, but if it's a moving picture, that's okay. Does that make any sense to you? It would seem a wicked moving picture would be far worse than one that is on the page. Do you think if God wanted you to destroy the pictures of the Canaanites because of their abominations, do you think He wanted your children to sit around and draw the pictures? That didn't make any sense, does it? Doesn't make any sense at all. Everybody that's a Christian that's godly, that's a leader, that's a parent, should be able to look down and say, why are you drawing that? Something is wrong. Something is wrong. New Testament, 2 Corinthians 6, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Perhaps God has not been blessing the way He wants to bless. Perhaps you have not experienced the power, the answered prayers, and other things that God wants to bless you with as His son or daughter. Maybe you are defiled, and maybe you want to really make God angry? You allow your children to be defiled. You just sit back and say, well, I'm just going to just ignore everything, let it come on into the house, and oh, I tell you what, that will make God grieved. I tell you, God loves children. He does. Uh, he loves to see children playing. We're not talking that it's wrong to draw today. We're not saying it's wrong to have artwork today. Uh, God loves beauty. I love beauty. Uh, what God's saying is, it's good to play. In fact, one of the blessings of the coming millennial kingdom among the natural nations uh, that the glorified overcoming Christian will reign over in the coming millennial kingdom, when the Lord comes, this is what God says in Zechariah, the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Children playing is a blessing. It's a blessing. This is wholesome playing, church of God. This isn't evil playing. This isn't dressing like a whore. This isn't trying to be a little girl and look like a whore at the same time. This isn't trying to be a homosexual and, and see how close to a, a, a sodomite you can become. This isn't playing with gore and violence and all of this destruction. This isn't sorcery. It's not devil worship. What would you think of modern Christians if you went into their homes after church and they had cartoons on that were saying, Hail Satan, all the world now is worshiping Satan. We worship you, Satan. And you looked and you said, What are you doing? It's just a cartoon. 
Just a cartoon, really? Not to the people that designed it. Not to your little children it might not be a cartoon. God forbid what is going on in America today. Art can be wholesome. Music can be wholesome. Playing can be wholesome. But they can also be full of idolatry and wickedness. It says in Proverbs 25, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. That's not pictures like a pouring juice out of. This is pictures. A word fitly spoken. God loves pictures. Pictures are beautiful. He paints pictures. He paints them in words. He paints them in parables. You're a walking picture in many ways. You're supposed to be, it, but it should be a good picture. It should be a good picture, not an evil picture, not a perverted picture. The devil comes along and wants to mess up God's pictures. See? He doesn't want the, the, the boy to look like a boy anymore. He doesn't want the girl to look like a girl anymore. He doesn't want the, 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 the man's head to, to be a representation of God the Father with no covering. So he comes along and messes it up, you know, let it hang all in your eyes and let it just look messy and just kind of look like that androgynous kid. This is what the devil wants you to do, but God wants you to be pure. What happens when the world, Satan, deceptive movements are brought into your home? If God in the Old Testament commanded that in your living room, which used to be the roof in the Middle East, where everybody hung out and had their family time together, he said, you better put a battlement around that thing. I don't want any children getting hurt. I command you, you put your little fence around your room when you hang out in your living room, and I don't want your neighbors coming over and falling off the roof or to be on your head. Imagine Americans today. Imagine American Christians saying, uh, well, we got to make sure nobody falls off the roof. You know, we got to make sure everything's safe. But yet you allow Satan to come into your home. You allow sodomites to come into your home through your media, through your entertainment. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What do you think God's going to think about this whole thing? He says in Deuteronomy 7, But thus shall you deal with them. You shall destroy their altars, break down their images. Do you see that word? Images. Break them. Tear them up. Now, I'm going to tell you, God's not calling you right now to go over into somebody's home and tear up their images. But you bring that ungodly, gross abomination into your home, you better tear it up. You better tear it up. You better get it out of your life. And you better say, that's unclean. And you better get out here at a fire and burn it. They say, now God forbid, son. God forbid, daughter. What in the world corrupted your mind? Who gave you that? Who introduced this to you? That's unclean. Deuteronomy 7.25, the graven images of their gods shall you burn with fire. Images of their gods pictures of their gods, videos of their gods. Thou shalt not desire the, soul, the, the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. What do you think that means? If you're snared, you can't move. You get a dog out here, he gets stuck in a trap. He's not moving. He's stuck. Stuck to die in destruction. I'm telling you, child of God, right now, you get your young people snared then they're going to become whatever this world wants them to become. They're stuck. And no matter what you do to try to move them, they're snared. They're stuck. You got them stuck. You left them stuck with the gods of the land. God says it's an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thy house. Unbelievable what Christians have brought in their house. I'm going to tell you why they brought it in there. They brought it in there because they said, it's just entertainment. It's just a cartoon. That's all it is. It's just music. And when you say it's just, you show forth your ignorance. Because behind everything that is good, there is a movement of Satan to corrupt it. Which means it's not just music. It's a movement. It's a spirit. It's a devil behind certain things. And it's your job to prove 
that there's no devil movement associated with this music that you're dealing with, with this art that you're dealing with, with this fashion that you're dealing with, with this entertainment that you're dealing with. God says, neither shalt thou bring an abomination to thy house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Now you get that zeal back today in the churches of God. You get an utter detesting of anything that is unclean, and God will bless you. God will bless you. We might have a chance, but you don't have a chance right now. As long as you're going to pat unclean things and bring them into your home. I grew up with anime from a young child. I would spend Saturday nights with my grandmother on my mother's side, and we'd go to church on Sunday down the road. At this church, every single Sunday, an older lady would come looking for me and back then, they'd kiss you right on the cheek. And uh, she was as sweet as could be, and she would hug you. Her name was Anna Mae. She's my great aunt. She's my grandfather's sister, Anna Mae Foss. There was nothing androgynous about her. I grew up with Anna Mae. Now, I wish that was the only Anna Mae that I had become associated with in my childhood, but it's not true. When I was in fourth grade, I'd walk home from school, and I'd stay by myself until my parents got home from work. Sometimes I'd watch a TV show called Speed Racer. It was different, very strange. You could tell as a child something different about this. What is it? I don't know. I didn't know it was Japanese animation, but I knew it was different. I remember being shocked at how mad the characters would get. If they got mad or stumped their toe or something, they would just beat things and jump around and make these hideous sounds. And every character was very emotional in the sense that you display anger. You, you have a fit. You have a tantrum. And uh, that was one of the things that was shocking when you watch it, you know, very expressive. And uh, it was marketed for the U.S. It first appeared in 1967. One time I said, you know, I remember Speed Racer. Maybe we could watch some of those cartoons. And, and, and I went back and I looked and I said, wow, I didn't realize all of that was there. You know, even the song that comes out, he's a demon on wheels. And you say, well, that's just being descriptive, you know. Well, you start watching it. You said, I think they meant a little more when they said he's a demon on wheels. You find out that the Racer X, Speed's older brother, that trained him to be this wonderful racer. His name was Kabbalah. So the, the skill, the expertise is coming from the Kabbalah, see, which is the occult book of hermetic Satanism. Then you go back and look and you realize there's an androgynous look to all of the characters and So you put that behind you, say, we're not going to be looking at Speed Racer, you know, and we'll stick to Tweety Bird or something like that. But, you know, just the, all of it's, even American Western animation is full of all kinds of things. And I've proved that to you in the past and showed that why is there 666 above this door? Why, why, why are you have so much uh, symbolism and Illuminati and occult symbolism mixed with these things? It's just, it's sad that they got to ruin they can't just entertain kids. You, you, you have to put some type of manipulation in these things. And, wow, they're not even hiding it now. Yes, we want to put homosexuality in your cartoons that you might learn to be accepting, if not become one yourself. Um, so sometimes I see kids drawing things. I never understood it. See, I have a music background. And if you have a pastor that doesn't understand music, a lot of things can go, get past him, see. 
But one thing I don't have is an art background. But that doesn't mean you can't study and discern movement. I could draw a Snoopy. That was it. That's it. And not even a good one. I can draw a Snoopy. That's it. That's it. I can't draw. All my friends could draw. They could draw cartoons, mock me, do all this stuff. I, I, I couldn't do anything. I, I could not draw. So I go around. I'm looking around the church or somebody's house or something, and I'm like, what are you drawing? Oh, it's a girl. Doesn't look like a girl. What's this over here? Oh, that's a boy. That's a boy? I don't understand this. Why aren't you drawing a beautiful girl? It's anime. I don't care what her name is. She doesn't look like a girl. Then you look at the boys sometimes. They're drawing stuff, blood and gore. And, and I know they're boys, but where's all this occultism coming from? You, you're drawing occult, gross things. Where is it coming from? See, I, I had no idea that people are going home and putting occult, wicked cartoons, largely designed for adults, and feeding them to their children. And when I say they're designed for adults, no adult should be consuming sorcery and gore. Just art. Nothing is just something. Now I see where all the colored hair in our culture is coming from. We're 30 years too late on this thing. This stuff blossomed and exploded back when we're preaching against Pokemon. That, that, was, that, that was the crescendo, the blossoming of the anime movement. And now it's become multi, multi-million dollar all around the world, full of occultism. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, but evil men and seducers, they're trying to seduce you, shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Oh, it's getting worse and worse and worse. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Where did this come from? This movement now that you're a part of, where did it come from? What are their intentions? Folks, if you do not learn to prove all things, prove that this is acceptable, prove that this movement that you brought into your home is good, prove it from the Bible. Try the Spirit, says the Lord. Test them, try them. Discern movements. Discern the times. The Lord complains that the men cannot discern the times. They can't discern anything. And if you can't discern it as a parent, I believe you can discern it. I believe if we sat down for five minutes and turned that thing on and said, man, I'm only here five minutes. You can't hear Satan, Kabbalah. You, you can't see the, the, oh, oh, the, the, the one who created all in heaven is now the bad guy. You, can, oh, you can't see that this, that this androgynous fella is now the savior, saving you from the bad one? That, uh, you don't have to have some type of special discernment to see they are reversing the Bible upside down. It's Gnosticism. That's what the Gnostics did. The creator God of the Bible became the bad one, and Satan became the savior, you understand, the androgynous one. If you can't understand the occultism and flipping the Bible upside down, it's pretty obvious to anybody that can sit down five minutes and look at it. But you can't understand that people walking around, these characters and the things they do, the gore, the innuendos, the blatant eroticism and porn. and it, You want your children to sit down and watch this garbage? I don't understand that. They're impressionable. I don't want to watch it as an adult. 
Ephesians 4, that we henceforth be no more children. What's wrong with children? Uh, in some ways, they're good. They're humble, you know, sometimes, uh, 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 that type of thing. But notice that children can also be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. They could sit on the side and say, hey, you want to see a puppy, little girl? Come over here and see the nice little puppy. And then they deceive the poor little girl. God forbid. Well, you don't think Satan does the same thing? He's the master of it. Hey, you want to see the nice little cartoon? You want to take it home and play with it? You want a nice little drawing book? Go home and draw. It's real, real pretty. Of course, Satan's laughing. I'm going to turn her into a lesbian, says Satan. I'm going to teach her to, to desire effeminate men. Oh, I'm going to bring her into all kinds of, where, where she wants to look like a harlot, a cute little harlot. You know. The Bible says in Luke 17, it were better for him that a millstone were hanging about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. That means stumble. Stumble. You as a parent are not to stumble your children. You as a grandparent are not to stumble into sin your grandchildren. We're all to be rocks. We're, we're, we're all to be on the straight and narrow and, and remove the stumbling blocks from the way of the young people. And say, no, 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 no. I'll give you beautiful things to draw. I'll give you art books. Go draw horses. Go draw nature. Go draw beautiful things. But don't draw sin. Don't draw things that are gross. Don't, don't draw Canaanite, Sodomite culture. Please get this right here through your head today. Satan latches on otherwise good things to suck you into a deception that he has designed where there is a movement and agenda behind it. And you don't ask for the movement. You don't ask for the agenda you just want to draw. You just want to play the guitar. You just want to have fun on a skateboard. It's the devil that comes behind and creates a movement that leads you into rebellion. I would see parents that would want good for their kids. I would teach guitar, 60 students a week at Grand Prairie School of Music and later my mother's performer's music. Uh, out of my house, out of my apartments. I was a full-time guitar teacher from the time I was 16. I would see parents come. I've told you the story before. They would be so glad to have little Billy with something to occupy his time. Oh, they would pat me on the back and say, you know, Mr. Guitar Teacher, he is so interested. He is so inspired now. All he does is play that guitar. It's so wonderful. And back then, I'd just be shaking my head. I'd just shake my head. Because I realized, without really being able to conceptualize it, that there was a movement. It wasn't just guitar. Out there is a movement associated with that guitar. And that kid's going to get sucked. There's no barriers. There's nothing to keep him. And I'm going to look at this nice young fellow, and I'm going to see him a year later. He's going to have some stupid dangling earrings hanging from his, try, try, trying to be, I don't know what he's trying to be. He's going to have his little spiked hair and all messed up. Look, he's just going to be a mess. And the boy's going to end up on drugs. And I'm going to look at these parents in the eye, and they're going to have tears in their eyes, and they say, what happened? What happened? We were just trying to get him into something. I say, I know. It, it, it got really hard. It got really hard. There is a movement associated. Guitar is good. Instruments are good. Violin's good. All of these things are good. Stay away from the wicked movements behind these things that the devil attaches to them. Learn to discern these things. The danger is when you don't watch. And devils are waiting to suck your children down the pit. I could share a whole entire testimony. I won't do it. But I'll give you just a quick example of how I was sucked down a movement in the same way. I grew up, as I said, I told you before, with outlaw country blaring on the stereo 
uh, the whole house is shaking with outlaw country, Waylon Jennings, Willer, Willie Nelson, George Jones, you know, but, but, uh, and then all of a sudden I got my album, you know, my Waylon Jennings album, and they've got long hair, and here's Willie Nelson, hair down his back, and it was so confusing for a country boy, you know what I mean? Very, very confusing. But I'm like, well, okay. Then I got a Rod Stewart album for Christmas. I'm like, what is this fella with the earring? He doesn't even, I mean, it's one thing to have a cowboy hat and some longer hair. What is this? But you start getting into the music, and it looks like girls like him, and I'm like, That's still strange. We end up in these apartments. First day, we're walking to the post office by the pool. I'm like, Mom. What is that? Did you see that boy? He's got his necklace, he's barefoot, and he's got long hair. It looks just like a girl. Never seen anything like it. I never seen anything like that. Seen it in the pictures. I just never seen it. He became my best friend. Next thing I know, he's knocking on my door. He said, I heard you got a Marshall amplifier. And he's got a whole bunch of other kids his age with long hair. And I'm like, yeah. Next thing I know, I get somebody else knocking on my door. They're 19 and 20. They say, we heard you had a Marshall amplifier. I said, yeah. They say, come with us, kid. Next thing you know, I'm gone every weekend with people that are 19 and 20. They have their leather hats. They're barefooted. They have hair down their backs. And every one of them, we go to the river. We play. That's what we do every weekend. So I end up going to camp, becoming a camp counselor about the exact same time. My camp counselor has long hair. He's an expert with horses. Girls seem to be attracted to him. He says, I'm nature boy. I said, you are? And all of a sudden, he said, yeah, let me teach you about the woods, teach you about horses. And uh, I began to look up to him. So I said, man, I'm going to grow my hair long. Next thing you know, from these people I'm hanging out with in the guitar world, from the camp counselor even, Next thing you know, I'm a camp counselor. I'm growing my hair long at 13 years old. And then all of a sudden, instead of the Christians there at the camp and the Christian girls, they're all 19 and 20. Instead of them saying, oh, you know, you look like a little girl. You ought to cut that. Oh, no, that's cute. You know, you look like one of these Leaf Garrett fellas. You know, you got long blonde hair. Oh, that's just, I'm like, wow, this is power. This is power. People like this. So um, I kept it long. From age 13 all the way up, all the way up, except for one time I got a job at Six Flags and I felt miserable because they made me cut my hair. I felt that I was ugly. I felt this was just horrible, that my power had gone. It was just a horrible situation. But um, what was my problem? My problem is I associated long hair with guitar music and it was something that was not opposed to girls. It wasn't anything unmanly. It was nature, riding horses, Leonard Skinner, leather hats. It was the day of wrestling, where in South Carolina, wrestling was a pretty serious business. We're talking the fake wrestling. Ric Flair, nature boy Ric Flair. I show up at my junior high school with 19 and 20 year olds for a for a talent contest. I got instantly popular with everybody because all their older brothers, I was with these uh, fellas that they all knew in the drug culture and they're uh, down there playing. My grandpa looked at me and he said, after I played the talent show, he said, man, why do you got long hair? and Why are you playing drug music? Finally, when everybody cut their hair in my whole school, I left mine long. I enjoyed fighting to defend it. It was a sport for me to provoke jocks and wrestlers. That is the absolute truth. It wasn't until much later I realized I was part of a larger movement. I'll just tell you this real quick. And the reason I'm telling you this is to show how easy you and your children can get sucked in something you don't even realize what you're dealing with, see. My band, I'm afraid to say, I I'm ashamed to say. I told you before, we had this uh, mascot that was seven feet tall. He had to have a special car to get into. It was so fat and so big, he couldn't get through the door. 
we'd put an executioner's mask on him and we'd play Michael Jackson. And when the whole um, band would start, you would see a stage would fire and then you would see Michael Jackson jam box playing and then all of a sudden you would see in the background this seven foot tall person with an executioner's mask with a giant battle axe and he would crush the Michael Jackson thing which we called queer music and he would crush that and then fire would go off and that's how we opened up our band. So when I would play clubs I would hand out flyers, I really would, that would say no homosexual music. Come see the real rock and roll. <laughs> Boy, I was so confused about things. The owner of the club came to me and said, listen here, man, you can't hand those out. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you, you can't be against homosexuals. Homosexuals are cool. I'm like, what in the world are you talking about, man? He says, what the long hair, androgyny, homosexuals, punk music. It's all part of the rock culture. I just sat there, man, like a wet puppy. I said, you got to be kidding me. Then I hear these rock bands say, we all await the coming of the Antichrist. The coming of the Antichrist? Hell, Satan, we await the coming of the Antichrist? I said, man, I'm, in, I'm on the wrong boat. I'm on the wrong boat. Then I hear Dee, Dee Snyder or one of these bands say, don't you understand? what the, the long-haired guitar or singer is. He's the old androgynous witch doctor who everybody worshipped in the Indian tribe, but they knew he was androgynous, half male, half female, and into the occult. That's what Led Zeppelin is. That's what these rock singers are. And that's why you got the contradiction, Led Zeppelin, Guns and Roses. He's, he's like a man, but he's also like a woman. And, and it's like power. It's occult power. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm off the boat. I didn't know. I didn't know that's what was behind all of this stuff that I was associated with. That is the absolute true story. Now, my question for you is this. What movement are you involved in? Have you checked it according to the Word of God? Have you proved all things to see what the devil has designed by that entryway? Oh, he's just riding a skateboard. Yeah, but there's a movement behind the skateboard culture. How are you going to stay away from that? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Oh, they're getting into art. Well, that's wonderful. But there's some dangerous sodomite art movements out there and occult movements, how are you going to keep your kid away from that as they get into art? Oh, I want them to get into music. Wonderful. I do too. How are you going to keep them away from the occult and the wicked rebellion and drug culture involved in the music? Those are questions that you've got to ask. I'll go further. I believe in health. You know that. You know I believe in natural health. But then all of a sudden you look around and you're at somebody's house and you pick up one of the oil books and you're like, hey, will you come here a second? They come here. I said, why is, this in your, why is this here where all your children can see it? Well, we've been handing that out at church. It's all about essential oil. I said, you've been handing this out at our church? No wonder we've been having curses. Do you understand this is full of witchcraft spells? Well, all the essential oil books tell you how to use oils for hocus pocus and love potions and all of that. Well, well, burn it then. I'm into essential oils. I'm into natural health. I'm into herbs, but I'm not into witchcraft. You got to learn how to get into natural health without getting into witchcraft. At the Salem witch trials, all the people in the community just about were into folk magic and they didn't even know it. God cursed that thing like you wouldn't believe. The devil grabbed everybody by the nose. Next thing you know, they've got girls accusing the good Christians of being witches, and then girls were devil-possessed, levitating, speaking in men's voices, because they were just playing games down in the basement, playing games with a slave who taught them how to do voodoo and all kinds of magic. It's all just games. No, it wasn't just games. It was devil possession. You better learn how to get into midwifery. How to get into natural health, how to get into herbs and oils without becoming a witch. So, but it's just the stuff's just saturated. I know. I know. 
The devil saturates every good thing, whether it be music, whether it be art, whether it be natural health. You've got to be wise, and you've got to separate what is wholesome from the movement that is satanic. I hope you're getting the point today. What's your boy listening to? It just talked about raping a girl and said girls are whores and you ought to just rape them and beat them. It's just music. No, that's not just music. That's a movement. See some little girl dressed exactly like a harlot, moving around like a harlot. You say, what in the world, sir, are you doing with your daughter here? It's just dancing. It's just jazz dancing, dressing like a harlot, moving around like a harlot. No, that's not just dancing. That's a movement. That's a movement. After reading some books, I found a documentary called The Dark Secrets of Anime. They say we started doing some digging, and man, this stuff is dark. Is that anime in the kids' section? In the 1990s, anime exploded in pop culture. They'd go into conventions, and you wouldn't believe kids with blue hair, green hair, everything you can imagine, androgynous. They say, have you watched this? And they say, oh, yeah. They say, isn't it violent and gory? They're like, oh, yes. He said, when did you start watching it? Eight years old. Damn. Full of occult, Satanism, androgyny, paganism, sorcery, pornography, blasphemous against the God of the Bible. Sailor Moon came out in 1992, the series. It is not suitable for any audience, say the documentary writers let alone children. When they have kids in there, you automatically assume it's for kids. Pedophilia can be found across anime as well as themes of incest, homosexuality, lesbianism, transsexualism. Don't you puff up and say, I like to draw. I like to play guitar. I love natural health. I got to separate the things I'm into from the witchcraft and evil that's involved, uh, uh, involved in that culture. I had to do it, and I learned the hard way. You've got to do it, too. Whatever your hobby is, you've got to separate the dung and the trash and the evil and the movement from what you like to do, whether it's play violin, whether it's grow herbs, or whether it is draw and illustrate. Sailor Moon is two lesbians. When they sent it to the U.S., they had to change it to cousins because Japan automatically in its culture accepts this because of the background of Buddhism and some of the Eastern religions associated with. Um, but when it came to America, they said, okay, we got to change this and we'll make, we'll make them cousins. But they still did everything together. They still kissed. They still did all the lesbian scenes together in the cartoon, but, but they were cousins, which makes it even grosser now. So now you've got lesbo cousin lovers, which is one step worse than what Japan had. Um, full of magic, sorcery, spells, reincarnation, underage drinking of alcohol. At one point, Sailor Moon cries out to Saturn. Then you finally find out that Sailor Moon, remember you see Sailor, masculine, Moon, feminine, see? Lead, heavy, zeppelin, floats, guns, roses. What you have is the bringing together of the opposites into... They call Sailor Moon the Messiah. You recognize Sailor Moon is now the Messiah, the androgynous, lesbo Messiah. Dragon Ball Z, like Sailor Moon, there's a ton of highly lewd comment, uh, content and dirty innuendos. praying to all the things of nature to empower me and give me energy. Pantheism. 
Now you see why in the, the Bible it says in the book of Revelation that they're going to pray to the rocks to save them from the destruction that's coming. They're praying to Mother Earth. They're praying to the power that's in everything in nature. I mean, this thing, unbelievable. Full of pan, full of the ox god, dragons, hermeticism. Then Satan shows up. And the whole world hails him as the savior. He drives around with 666 on his car and everybody says, Satan is here to save us. What does that do to kids? This is anime. What is anime? It's Japanese animation. God help us. David Gertzner in the Rootledge International Encyclopedia of Queer Culture says anime is a uniquely Japanese form of animated movies and TV and programs. It is closely related to manga, a uh, Japanese comics. But one aspect of anime and manga is that inevitably attracts the attention of a gay audience in the manner in which characters are drawn. Male characters are especially heroic. Uh, the ones that are especially heroic or sympathetic ones tend to be drawn in an androgynous manner. Why do you want to be associated with something that makes their heroes look queer? Some examples of anime, anime that feature gay male characters are all of these, all of these, all of these. Lesbian relationships are present in the world of anime and manga. The popular Sailor Moon, for example, contained a lesbian couple in its original Japanese version, but it can be seen in the unedited DVD release. Oh, of course. See, this is decades before Disney came out and says, okay, now we're openly gay. But anime was already open with this stuff, see. Stories involving transgender characters are also quite popular in anime and manga. These take two forms. The first of these involves characters who pretend to be the opposite sex, dressing up and acting the part, just kind of teasing you into it. The other form taken by transgender stories are the more recent tales in which characters actually become the opposite sex, usually by some sort of supernatural means. This is real serious now when the school teachers are taking children and saying, do you want to transition? You want us to take you to give you some drugs stronger than the antibiotics and hormones that you're already on? We wet the whistle with the BPA and stuff, but now we're going to give you the hard stuff. Don't tell your daddy. Don't tell your mama. Well, this is serious business, folks. These same parents that say, how dare you do that to my child? How dare you try to go give my child a sex change? How dare you do that behind my back? And then they'll say, now sit down, little Johnny or Julie, and... Uh, Put your anime on and you watch those cartoons about all of the... Doesn't make good sense, does it? Doesn't make good sense. Why do such themes occur so regularly in Japanese popular culture? One probable reason is that the native Japanese Shinto religion contains no prohibitions against gay relationships. In fact, love between men was traditionally viewed as the most pure form of love. Even the warrior samurai believed that physical love between the samurai master and the student was desirable. Osamu Tezuka, they called the father, grandfather of anime. He came out with Astro Boy and Speed Racer as his earliest examples. But he's known and celebrated for his very, very dark adult homosexual comics. They call it adult, full of abominable things. But he flirted with it in what was marketed to children. Tezuka came out with uh, Princess Knight. There we go again, princess, but they're a knight, see? You gotta mix it together, androgyny, yin and yang. The series is about Princess Knight, a character named Sapphire who possesses both the heart of a girl and the heart of a boy. There was already in the Japanese culture to try to make women cute. as a Japanese ideal in fashion after World War II to make them look as girly. I'm not talking about feminine. We're talking wear things too small, make them as girly as you can, but then make them lewd in some way. So you just type in anime, and God forbid, it, everywhere you look, every image, it's like, well, it's like a little girl 
dressed like a harlot. It's so sweet and cute, but what's all this harlot stuff? You know. And then there's a whole world of outright pornography associated. So kids get their entry level, and then before you know it, they're off looking at videos and things that's anime pornography. Much more blatant than what they were already into. Homosexual stories appeared in the 1970s in Japan, read by girls. By 2016, it reached over $190 million dollars in boy love stories designed for teen girls. The father of anime, Tezuka, in 1970 released Cleopatra. Already in Cleopatra there were LGBTQ whatever characters. Then something happened in Japan. A serial killer was caught, arrested, and went in his house. They found it was full of anime comics, full of all of these things, and the Japanese got really angry, started arresting owners of shops, and says, no more, no more, this is bad, this is bad, but it's a business, it's a business. Halfway through the Sailor Moon series, lesbian characters are openly now introduced. On June 3rd of 2021, Sailor Moon Eternal, a continuation of the Sailor Moon Crystal series, premiered on Netflix with two homosexual characters. You also had Fisheye, an effeminate man who cross-dresses as a woman because he's attracted to men. Mashable tells us, we need the queerness of Sailor Moon now more than ever. Watching Sailor Moon right now feels like chicken soup for the queer soul. This decades old anime shows, was, this show was eons ahead of modern day Disney. What do you think a Christian generation growing up on that is going to produce for their kids? What do you think they're going to be when they get 18 or 19? What do you think? You feel kids with BPA, antibiotics, hor uh, hormones, uh, Disney, but then give them a rich culture of anime where everything they draw, everything they consume is androgynous. And you say, why'd you draw the woman like that? I don't know. I just did. Well, why didn't you give her long hair? I'm not sure. Why'd you draw that boy like that? Does that look like a man? That's somebody you want to marry? They probably say, yeah, yeah, I want to look just like that. Ranker, 24 anime boys that you definitely thought were girls. Anime has become such a prevalent art form that its style is instantly recognizable. These specific techniques allow illustrators to depict characters, namely men and boys, with more typical feminine features, which leads to another famous anime trope, anime guys who look like girls, especially the heroes. Margaret O'Connell. The same Ranker article says, bending the rules of an anime character's gender is nothing new. In fact, many shows feature anime boys who look like girls. Margaret O'Connell and why do manga and anime characters look the way they do? Uzamu Tezuka, the founding father of the modern Japanese manga and anime industry, set the tone for post-World War II Japanese comics. He began to draw girls' romance comics, such as Ribbon Knight. See, he was already playing with the androgyny. They're ribbon, but they're a knight, see. Um, Levi goes so far as to assert that the notoriously willowy feminine look of many male manga characters is directly attributed to this Takarazuka theater, an all-female troupe that cross-dresses who are often the objects of crushes by their young teenage female fans. So really before anime exploded, you already had this pop culture phenomena where you had teenage female Japanese girls falling in love with boys, but they were really girls that everybody knew were cross-dressing and dressing like boys. 
Levi states, most Japanese parents considered it a normal part of growing up and even regard as nicer and purer than the alternative of their daughter's first experience of puppy love being directed toward an actual male. So you have this climate of, well, it's a girl dressed up like a boy, you got a crush, put your poster up and just be infatuated with that. Go ahead and read your gay uh, or homosexual books and you, you already had this whole movement associated before it started coming out even more into the cartoons. See, Everything's androgyny. So now you will see young girls in Christian churches and you look at the boys that they see as the ideal boys, they're transgender. No, no, I don't mean just a little bit transgender. They're transgendered. You think that's attractive? Does that really look attractive to you? What happened? Something happened. That's not right. Th that's just one step away from lesbianism. If you want your boy, your man, to look like a girl, how close are you to lesbianism? And a lot of them are coming out lesbian all over the nation. Christian church is full of them. Japanese ideas of what sorts of sites and concepts are suitable for children tend to be far more flexible than those prevalent in the United States. All the more reason to be wary. Michael M., good question, 2017, says anime owes part of its fascination to its ability to portray issues of doubt. The often androgynous anime character is both an alluring Valentine and a menacing figure of danger, capturing the ambiguities of emerging sexual identity. In other words, they're going to come out and, and he's going to say, the, the anime figure is going to say, I don't know what I am. They're going to say, well, really, I don't know what I am as a teenager either. I wonder what I want to identify as. That's what they're saying. Carol Margaret Davidson, Paul Simpson, Hoosley, Ram Stoker's Dracula says, North American audiences associate anime with action-packed violence, liberal doses of gore, frank portrayals of strong, lewd women, and the representation of the androgynous male heroes of anime. That does not sound like anything a fundamental Christian should have anything to do with whatsoever. Gary Westfall, the Greenwood Encyclopedia of Science Fiction, says in fantasy, androgynous characters abound. You have tales of elves and fairies often emphasize their androgynous character. Xena the warrior princess is depicted as androgynous. And of course, there's anime and manga. Forms of Japanese cartoons and comic books contain male and female characters who are markedly androgynous. Yes, indeed. Keith. In fantasy, androgynous characters abound. Oh, we said that. Um, we said that. Keith Sparrow, anime art, easel does it. it. Says many central male characters look very androgynous, although material aimed at older viewers often has distinct semi-erotic overtones. <laughs> no, it's it, it's in the the things marketed to children. Unbelievable what they're sticking in there. Nobody cares. I looked to see what people would say about it. They said, well, you see that stuff in everything. What's wrong with homosexuals? That's how parents are responding. Ah, who cares about witchcraft, you know? Just, just witchcraft, sorcery. Oh, there's fornication and everything. Folks, it's pedophilia is what it is. It's looking at children in a, in a lewd way, dressing them up in lewd ways, having them do lewd things. That's, that's some sick stuff, man. There's even a movement out there called pocophilia right now from the whole anime pornography gateway trapping people into real porn CBR comic says even anime characters can be uncertain of their identity at times confusion is just the beginning of understanding see now what you gotta realize here is there's a spiritual cross-dressing that goes with all this androgyny you're not supposed to be logical and reasonable. No, in fact, Buddhism has you read things that don't make sense on purpose. Buddha said that no mind thinks no things. The whole idea is to just get confused and meditate 
and let the devil take over, see. You've got a culture that wants childish fantasy. They want to be treated as children. They don't want sobriety and reality. You got children dealing with adult themes that adults should not even be messing around with. And you got adults messing with childish things in a pedophilia way. My last verse for you today says in 2 Timothy, For the time will come, boy, we're in it now, right now, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So now you have boys. They're 18, 19 years old. All across America, that's how they look. That's how they act. And they're leaving churches by the droves. They're leaving churches by the droves. They like Japanese culture. Probably some wonderful Christians in Japan that are hating what's going on right now. What happened to them? How did they end up like that? Dear Holy Father, I do pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, that somehow you would inspire some young men to want to be men, to want to be strong, to want to exhibit characteristics of strength and godliness and purity and courage. And that it would be godly feminine women, Lord, that want to be pure, holy, sober, Feminine, without being grungy and dirty and trashy. May we live, Lord, to bring forth the distinctions. We know soon the Antichrist will arise, very soon. And androgyny will be his theme. As all the religions and occult Satanists of the world have looked for him to come in our generation. I pray Christians will wake up, cleanse their homes, learn to enjoy all the good things that you've given us without abusing and getting off into Satan's domain. In Jesus' name, amen.